Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bonnie for those of you who don't know me and I create special effects videos here on YouTube. So if you're not already, please subscribe down below and don't forget to tick that notification bell so you do get a notification every time that I upload. In this video today, I'm very excited because I'm going to show you how to create some mermaid ears. Now these can obviously be used for many different looks and creatures. I've done dragons, I've done water nymphs, I've done so many cool and crazy things with these techniques. This was what I used for my mermaid ear in my face awards video. They're really cute, you can make them big, small, coloured, whatever you want and it's so much fun. They're really cheap and easy and they're semi waterproof because they're made out of latex so I did go swimming with these and they stayed on pretty well. I'm going to show you two different methods. One is with an air drying clay called Model Magic and then the other one is with cardboard, liquid latex and cotton wool balls. So they're really nice and easy and cheap. Both of these methods are really fun and really give different looks so that's why I wanted to include them today. If you do recreate this video please tag me on Instagram, I would absolutely love to see it and I love seeing all of your creations. Ears really make or break a creature and in my opinion they can just change it so much and add so much more to the look. Certain things definitely need them as well or they can look a little bit funny without them. So if you've come to learn how to do them then this is the right place for you. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial today, if you do please give it a very big thumbs up and let's get started with the video. As this is episode 3 of my Gore Guide series, I'm going to cover this in a very in-depth manner. I'm going to show you not only how to make two pairs of ears, but also how to apply them and blend them out into a full face of prosthetics. It's so important that you guys have a rough idea on how to put them on once you've made them, so I did include that at the end of this video as well. To begin, I'm going to show you how to create these really cute mermaid ears, but of course you can use them for almost anything under the sun. I'm taking this little template that I made and I'm using a lightweight cardboard. This is literally the back of a cereal box. Because I wanted this to be really accessible, most of you would probably have a cereal box at home. So I started to trace out my little shape and size that I wanted. I then flipped over my stencil and then started to repeat that exact same shape. In order for you guys to glue these onto your face later, you will have to have some sort of a hinge where you can adhere that down. This is a little rectangle that I've got on either side. These won't be included in the design, but it's very important that you do have them. So make sure you've got them on there and you can make them as big as you want, but I wouldn't go any smaller than what I've got here. I then took a sharpie and started to really define the edges and started to give myself a rough little guide for me to follow. I originally thought in this video today that I'd be able to create this just with hot glue, but I decided that I couldn't get the exact sharpness that I want. So I went in with a hot glue gun and started to apply that on the spines. This definitely reinforced it and gave it a very strong feel. So I would recommend still doing this, but you can of course just go in with the liquid latex and cotton wool balls. My first tip to help you guys create really good ears is to keep the hinge clear of product. If you start to bulk this up, it's going to make it so much harder to bend backwards and then to stick down and adhere to your face later on. I apply mine with skin tape and a bunch of latex, so if you've got it too bulky on that area, it's definitely not going to work out well when it comes to application. Now to get these nice and sharp, which is why I do recommend using hot glue, I'm going to start cutting them out and it's going to give us a really nice pointy sturdy base. I'm going around every edge and making all of those spines look nice and cute and then once you've got that done we can finally move on to the latex process. If you're really neat with this you can definitely use this as a really quick DIY method because the latex does take overnight to dry. These of course won't be waterproof but I tell you what they're a really quick way to create ears if you need them desperately. So to reinforce this today and give it more of a waterproof feel I'm taking liquid latex, cotton wool balls and a few q-tips to apply it. I'm starting out by applying a heavy amount of latex over the whole entire ear. If you do desire a semi waterproof ear, once you complete all of these steps you can flip it over and seal the back with latex as well, but for now I'm just going to show you how I create these spikes. I'm going in and tearing up the cotton wool balls and starting to apply that over the top of my already sculpted and raised hot glue area. I'm going in very neatly with a q-tip and starting to really saturate that in latex and build it up. I was lucky enough to pretty much do this in one go, I just spent a lot of time sculpting and getting it nice and flat, but if you really want to build up the curve and make it really shaped, you can of course let this dry overnight, and then go back in with another layer to get it super raised. Quick reminder as we move on to this step not to apply too much onto that hinge because it can happen so easy and I already started overstepping my boundaries. I found it a lot easier and quicker if I really drenched the cotton wool in latex and applied lots of it so it soaked through and became a really soft consistency and I pretty much used the q-tip the whole entire time to sculpt. You could use other products as well but I found this nice and easy and quick. Each ear took me about 45 minutes to make but I was filming the process so I'm sure you could achieve this a lot quicker at home. Once you're happy that both your ears look semi-even you can then go ahead and stipple your last final layer of latex on both the back and the front of the ears let them set overnight and that's going to give them just a nice little 
waterproof coating, but I say waterproof quite loosely. Now, when it comes to applying these, you can of course just stick them down, but I'm gonna take some skin tape and a cotton wool pad and apply that to my ear because I wanted these to really stick out of my face and have this really big, cute, kind of like Pokemon vibe to it. So going in, I'm starting to tape them down and I did apply a bit of spirit gum as well, but that's just optional. Skin tape really helps hold them in place because they can be quite heavy if you make them large. I went in with liquid latex on a sponge and started to stipple that down both sides. The skin tape works really well and it just blended down so easily into the sides of my skin. So that is how you apply them and blend them into a prosthetic and if you do want these to be mildly waterproof for any sort of like photography purposes, I do highly recommend painting yourself in a grease paint as opposed to any sort of like a water based paint and there you have it, you can jump into a little pool and be a mermaid. I truly believe that this look wouldn't have been as epic if I didn't have the ears and I also made the tail as well but I never filmed it. My husband and I literally just did pretty much the same steps but on a mega scale for the tail using cardboard, liquid latex and paint. So to create these dragon ears today, I'm going to be using very similar steps but a different product. I'm taking this Model Magic, which is a lightweight air drying clay. In Australia, I don't think you can purchase this in store, so I get mine on eBay, but I know overseas they do sell it in like Target and things like that. I'm going to start to apply that into the shape that I want it and flatten it out into a pancake. I rolled up spikes and I made sure that the top and bottom of the ear were a lot thicker and then the ones in the middle were nice and petite. I went in and applied those down and this product does stick to itself which is really easy and simple so once you press it down into place it's going to dry and stay there. Once I had that little rough area mapped out it does look quite dodgy at first but I think the more that you work on this you can definitely get it nice and neat. To create the webbing in between the little spikes I'm going in with a pair of scissors and starting to cut that in a tapering down shape from the top of the ear all of the way down to the bottom. You can go in and start to mould and sculpt it later so just kind of cut it down and then press the spikes in to keep them nice and secure. I went ahead and started to really refine the spikes because I wanted them to have really pointy tips. So going in and pinching the edges to really extend them out past the webbing just to give it a really cute look. Now I keep saying cute because I just really believe the ears are cute, but you could literally create some sort of evil siren with this if you wanted. So what I'm doing now to make these different to the mermaid one is I'm going in and creating mini scales. I think that these scales, because they're so pointy and close together, definitely gave more of a dragon vibe, but you can of course create almost like larger rounder scales if you want to create your mermaid ears just the same. To taper off the edge of these ears and give them a nice clean look, I just simply cut the play-doh while it was still soft and then made sure they were all stuck down together and then let them dry overnight. These were a little bit fiddly and hard to make, so don't be fooled by how quick and easy that mini video was. Trust me, these take a while, but they do work really cool and they're very lightweight. Now to apply these to the face, you're gonna to need to have some sort of a little hinge. So I'm going in and super gluing on two little pieces of cardboard in the same little shape that we used earlier. This is just one of the many ways you can incorporate them into your look. Feel free to even super glue them onto a headband if you want to have your little dragon ears poking out of your wig. I think that would be a super cute way to incorporate them into a look as well. I just found that for both of the times I needed to apply these, I wanted them to be situated behind a prosthetic. So I took spirit gum and applied that to the back of the ear, tapped it in place and then firmly pressed that down. As these are a clay, I don't necessarily think they're going to be waterproof, but they really held the makeup well. I applied a water-based paint over the top and surprisingly, it looked absolutely flawless. And that's it guys, that's how you make your own creature ears. I hope you enjoyed both methods in this video today. Let me know in the comments if there's one you prefer over the other. I think they both have a very different look and purpose, so that's why I included both in this video today. I can't really pick between the two, but the whole point of your score guide series is to build up your skills and give you some product knowledge throughout the year so when it comes to Halloween you can get super creative. That's it guys, that is the end of my video today. I hope you all enjoyed and learned something. If you recreate anything, please tag me on Instagram at Bonnie Corbin SFX or hashtag BC Showcase. Thank you so much for watching again. I hope you guys learned something new today and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. <laughs>